this year, you know, Inoki and Masa have a series of single match. Masa came back from America after his jail time. Yeah, just, let's just speak with us because I remember I grew up in Winnipeg, as you guys know, and that was a big AWA territory. That was the first. That's how I got into wrestling. So Masa Saito was a huge name to me at 12 or 13 years old because he was the one of the big heels yeah. in AWA. And then he just disappeared, which years later I found out because he was in jail. How did he end up in jail in, in America? You know, he was he had a green card and he was process of you know like, he he was gonna be an American citizen you know he thought he was gonna live there forever you know at the time he already lived in America and had green card that's why he had no problem working any any his you know territories mm -hmm. he had run with WWF with Mr Fuji he had run in the NWF Florida he went all over the place right right San Francisco Royal he had green card you know oh. and he was gonna live there he thought but after Ken Patera and Masa Saito's this police incident and then uh, the court took place in wisconsin they were going to nail these professional wrestlers and they wanted to put him in the jail right and he served time 18 months in jail did he beat up some cops like because they wouldn't open up a mcdonald's for them? Oh, okay. yeah okay. yeah it was I, I don't i wasn't there you know and then you re had to read about it i went to visit masa saito in in wisconsin jail two twice you did i did twice wow spring and winter I boiled soba noodles and uh, I brought Japanese food and Bento drove four hours to Wisconsin wow. with his wife at the time. And I visited him in, in Wisconsin jail. But there was no fence. You know why they have no fence in uh, jail in Wisconsin? It's in the middle of woods, middle of nowhere. You had to you know, walk 20 miles to <laughs> anywhere. In civilization, you know. Were you already a journalist at that point, Fumi? Yeah, yeah. I, I started in 81. Wow. I was still in college. But you also went to college in Minneapolis or Minnesota, right? Yeah. Oh, I got you. I wrote letter to Japanese editor in the wrestling magazine, you know. I live in America, and I can take photos and write stories. You know, I can be your correspondent in America. And I wrote letter to the editor, you know. Right. 19-year-old guy, you know. And they didn't think I could do it, so they wrote back and said, oh, great, let's do it, do it, do it, not thinking I could do it. And you did. Yeah, I, I made up my own identification card and uh, put my photo on it, and then I made my own ID. <laughs> you had to. You make your right. own press pass and went to Vern Gagne and the Wally Cobbles show, and then, you know, I started showing up the show with my camera. And they didn't believe me first, you know. But uh, I started taking for my debut match was Vern Gagne against Nick Bakwenko, 1981. And I sent the photo to Japanese Wrestling Magazine. They made, you know, four-page color page on it. I brought the magazine back to AWA office and see, see, see. Right? And also people like Adrian Adonis and Jesse Ventura started making tours to Japan. And Adrian almost took me under his wing and said, you know, yeah, you're all right, I like you. And then uh, became friends. So when Masa was in jail, you went and visited him? I visited, yeah. I visited. Yeah. I got little details, you know, too. And I read all the newspaper, what happened in the court and all that. And then Kemperture threw a big brick boulder into McDonald's window because they were closed, you know? <laughs> Bad, huh? <laughs> Typical wrestlers, though, right? I want food. Yeah, McDonald's <laughs> in a small town, Waukesha, Wisconsin, the population of 500. <laughs> They know where wrestlers are staying. Oh, yeah, right. Good point. Yeah, so the, they, the police force, you know, the, I mean, you're talking dozen cops, right, came to their motel room, you know, and uh, they knocked the door, and then uh, Masa was rooming with Ken Patera, and Masa answered the door and, and told the cop, no, Ken isn't here. And then, but they maced him, you know. And then uh, he, um, he got out of the room and shut the door, but they locked, you know, with his underwear and everything, you know. But uh, so they one thing led to another, and the, one cop from one end of the hallway, and the, the other group of cops from the other side, you know, end of the hallway. He had to fight too, you know. Mm -hmm. All in all, assaulting police officer is a big crime, eh? you know. <sighs> Absolutely. Oh, it's passed in a small town in, in, in Wisconsin. Exactly. And they wanted to have that court in that town too, not in Minneapolis. Oh wow! Not in Minneapolis with Verngania professional lawyers, you know. But anyhow, to make the long story short, they were in jail, you know, and I went to visit him a couple of times. And after he got out of jail in the end of 1986, 
he pretty much changed his mind that he wanted to come back and have a final run as an active wrestler because he got lonely about it because he was already 40 something. Right. And being in jail for 18 months, he worked out in there though, but he didn't think he could have match anymore. And I, people were telling me, it's like riding a bicycle, so you can have a match, you know? <laughs> he trained again and made comeback a little bit, but that was dying day of AWA too, you know? Right. Yep. And Inoki was having, you know, running his like a final run as active wrestler. Two years later, he'll become politician, remember? Right, right. But he still wrestled for another 10 years after that. Yeah, but uh, two or three matches at, at a time. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Every time he wrestled, it was a big deal. But active full-time wrestler and a booker and promoter, that was becoming his final run, too. So Inoki assigned, wanted to have Masa Saito as his big rival. And uh, Masa wanted to come home and have his final run as active wrestler. 